anytime I do like a reaction video, I get a, a strange sense of joy at seeing myself fail. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. I'm Megan. Today we're going to be doing a video that I saw on Mara from Books Like Woe's channel. As many of you know, she is one of my favourite booktubers. I like to watch every single one of her videos. I just really love the way she talks about books. She reads a lot of mystery, so I get a lot of my mystery recommendations from her. So she did a video seeing how many of her anticipated 2021 yes, oh my god, the years <laughs> 2021 releases she actually had read. And I was like, Oh my god, I need to do this right now because I think I won't have done very well and I, I just want to see the numbers. I want to see the statistics. I know in my like spreadsheet how many of the 2021 releases that I own that I that I haven't haven't read roughly, but I don't really know my like most what I put on my most anticipated releases list. So it's that's different things, you know what I mean? They're, they're different dynamics. So I don't know how many of them I'm going to have read, but I really wanted to look at this because I think at this point in my channel at the start of 2021 this was my first time like really getting into finding out about new releases and like discovering them because before that I just like I, I didn't care like new releases I was like mm, I don't really like I don't really care I don't really care whereas now I really pay attention to new releases and um, but I feel like little little young innocent sweet old child Megan <laughs> from the start of 2021 was a bit like naive and just like chucking shit on the list <laughs> wishful thinking yeah you're a dreamer you dream a lot and you're no no <laughs> which I don't do now. I've tried to be a lot more selective of what I'm putting on these lists. I think my one this year was a lot shorter. Maybe not. Actually, I don't think it was, but I'm going to be more selective. So it's going to be interesting to see. Now, I am in this video only going to be reacting to the video that I did talking about the first half of the year because I do two anticipated releases videos a year. One for the first half of a year, one for the second half of the year. If we watched both, we'd be here for 10 years. Like literally, like <laughs> we'd be here forever. So we're only going to do the first half. And if you guys enjoy this we could do the second half if you don't enjoy it we'll just forget that the possibility was ever there for that to happen okay we are going to pretend we didn't hear that mara split it into four categories which i am going to copy um so we have read and liked unread and still interested read and didn't like unread and uninterested and then we'll kind of work out what percentage all of those were at the end okay are we ready i'm gonna turn my headphones on and we're gonna go do I want these or do I want my AirPods? Okay, I'm back. I know, you're all so worried. <laughs> God, fun eyeshadow. I don't do fun eyeshadow at the moment because I'm just like, I like to get really quick nowadays, so I don't do fun eyeshadow as much. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. Also, my eyebrows, they were blocky. They were blocky. Coming out this year, and hopefully, you'll find some that you're excited about too. First, I think this will be coming out on the day this video comes out, actually. Ooh. We've got The Burning Girls by CJ Tudor. CJ Tudor wrote The Chalk Man. So, The Burning Girls. I have not read, <laughs> but I am so interested. I'm actually reading that in the next video that I'm making. It's on my TBR for this month. If I had read quicker, if I had like, if I'd been reading a bit quicker at the moment, I would have read that already. This year just hasn't been the vibe for reading for me. It's not the vibe, stop! But I'm gonna, I was thinking to myself this morning, I'm gonna become a real reading bitch again. You know what I mean? I miss like, reading lots and it doesn't help the vlog I'm working on at the moment is books I never would have read otherwise so I don't feel the same like excitement versus I would if it was something on my TBR that I'm really excited to get to but I just like I want to do more vlogs so anyway unrelated yeah so I'm reading that next week pretty much so if I'd read a bit quicker I would have read it already and it would have been a statistic that you know could make us happy but alas next is if i disappear by eliza jane brazier i read and did not like we're not off to the best start because <laughs> you know another thing that you hope from this is that you're gonna like what you're putting on your most anticipated releases like you're gonna know your reading taste yeah didn't like if i disappear i feel like it was kind of universally disliked it was just weird it wasn't very well written and the kind of ending and the journey that the book went on was just very strange <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything, but like, if you read it, you know, like, how it ends, you're like... Uh, okay. Like... <laughs> so yeah, the resolution wasn't very good, I didn't think it was particularly well written. But I'm glad I read it, you know what I mean? 
I, we've read something, so that's something at least. I'm glad I've read it. We get into February. Now, February is a oh. nightmare. <laughs> God, <laughs> God me fucking stuff. Oh, no. Because I've got 10 releases on <gasps> ten. this list. 10 releases? 10 releases. Girl. Ten. Honey, you've got a big <laughs> storm coming. It's the shortest month. How is that even possible? First is one of my most, most. anticipated releases of this year. I just spoke about Sadie by Courtney Summers. Now we've oh, got the okay, project by okay, Courtney okay. Summers. And let me uh, just say, cults. <laughs> cults. Yeah, no, I have read the project. I loved the project. Listen, it got mixed reviews, but all of you who gave it mixed reviews are incorrect. Incorrect. Uh I'm an acquired taste. You don't like me? Acquire some taste. I loved it. I loved the project. At this point, I've read two of her books and they're both five stars. If I read one more, She's got one coming out called I'm the Girl this year, which looks very exciting, looks so cool. If I give another one of her books five stars, like, favourite all-time legendary author, legendary status, icon, icon. Yeah, the project is this book about, like, sisters, and it's emotional, and I cry every time I think about it, and it's about a cult that one of the sisters has joined, and the other one's trying to find her, and, oh my god, it's just going, yes, it was so good, it was so good. Courtney Summers, I say this every time, she knows how to kill you emotionally. She knows how to, like, can rip your heart out and stomp on it and then give it to you back and be like well at least it was stomped on by me you know what i mean <laughs> next is what big teeth by oh. rose zabo this is pitched as miss peregrine's home meets the adams family which is very exciting it okay it is exciting mm, oh okay so i haven't read what big teeth and i don't know how interested i am mm. here's the thing if it was like put in front of me and I had to read it for a vlog, I'd be like, yes! Like, oh my god, I'm so excited to read it. But I don't know if I was just, like buying books, right? There's a, there's a lot of books I would buy before I bought this book. But I would read it if okay, I'll put still interested. I'll put but like it's a bit it's a bit of a bitch to like get in the UK. I remember it being really awkward to get um in the UK. So I just I don't know. I don't know, dolls. I don't know. At this point, tricks. The dolls are the dolls. <laughs> That's a bit of a funny one. I, I think I took it off my Amazon wish list. Did I? I don't know. We shall see. But yeah, I, I'll put still interested. It did get mixed reviews, but I feel like it was the kind of mixed reviews that means I would still enjoy the book. Like, it's weird. It's a bit nonsensical. It's a bit dark. So, ooh, I just choked. So we'll say still interested, but like, mmm... It's debatable. Next, I think this is the only middle grade ah! on this list. I don't tend to read a ton of middle grade, but this is Me and My Dad yes! and the End of the Rainbow by Benjamin Dean. I loved Me and My Dad and the End of the Rainbow. I've read it and I liked it. Oh, hey! Yeah, I really liked Me and My Dad and the Rainbow. Gorgeous. Oh, I can't speak to my gorgeous story of like acceptance and I think it's so important for kids to read. Um, he's got another book coming out called The Secret Sunshine Project. Oh my god. Whew, S's were a problem for me when I was a kid. I had to go to speech therapy so if I mess up my S's please don't come for me. Um, <laughs> yeah it was just like the ultimate wholesome lovely middle grade. I absolutely loved it and I'm gonna read everything Benjamin Dean puts out in the future. Another one of my most anticipated, most anticipated. releases is Love is a Ooh. Revolution by Renee Watson also coming out on the- Okay this one is debatable. Hmm. I read it. I didn't love it. It was like a three star, but like a pretty low three star. So do I say I read and liked it or read and didn't like? I think I'm going to say read and didn't like. I, well, it wasn't that I didn't like it, but it was, I didn't like really like it either. I just kind of felt ambivalent towards it. It just wasn't as strong as Renee Watson's other stuff for me. It just felt like a, a bit like nothing happened. <laughs> Rude. And like the plot was very short, nothing really happened. I didn't get any character development. I feel like the issues that it was trying to touch on weren't really touched on that well. And it feels kind of forgettable, sadly. <laughs> oh, I'm being mean. I'm being mean. I'm being mean. At least it's another one I've read though. Next is Across the Green Grass Fields ah, by Shauna McGuire. Yes! This is I've read it. I have read and I loved it. Across the Green Grass Fields. This is One in the Way with Children's Series by Shauna McGuire, which is like portal fantasy of these kids going into these magical worlds. This is one you can start with. If you've never read anything from the series and you you're not as interested in the first couple. This is one you can start with. It's about a girl who goes into this world of like horses and centaurs basically. And it's so cool. And I really loved it. I was never really a horsey gal. I, I mean, I did like, 
<laughs> Sometimes I'd go to my grandparents this place where you could like ride on a horse for like two seconds, like when I was like a four year old, but I was never like a horsey girl, you know? But I did really like the, the, the relationships in this book. I thought it was very beautiful. I thought a lot of it was very poignant. I thought it was a really great installment in the Wayward Children series. So if you've never read any of the books or maybe you've read like the first few, I think you could read this one at any point, basically, is what I'm saying. Feeling good as hell. Why do they always make- Oh my god, there's a lot of ads in this video, Megan. <laughs> okay, really, really excited for this one. This has been on my anticipated for so long. The next one is Fat Chance Charlie <gasps> Vega by Crystal Maldonado. I'm doing so well! I'm doing so well! Okay, I read and loved Fat Chance Charlie Vega. Oh my god. You know the best thing about winning? It's winning. <laughs> I always quote that wrong. I never get it quite right. You know the best thing about winning? It's when you win! You know what's the most exciting thing about winning? It's when you win. I love that feeling. I really loved Fat Chance Charlie Baker. I gave it five stars. I think it was one of like the only like YA contemporaries I gave five stars last year. I thought it was beautiful. I thought the romance in it was amazing. I thought it was so well written. I'm so excited to read Chris Maldonado's release this year, which I have already got. Yeah, it was just like one of the best YA contemporary romances I've ever read. I just felt like it was like, perfect in how it was written and the audience it was trying to go for and I just thought it was great. We are doing well actually. I'm pretty proud of how I'm doing. I'm pretty proud of how many I've read and how, how many I've liked. We were all so happy that day. It's, it's actually hard to even imagine how terrible things would soon become. Next, just quickly, is Where Hope Comes From by Nikita Ooh. Gill. Nikita Gill is a poet. Okay, yeah, okay. I've read Nikita Gill in the past. I've read Great Goddesses and I enjoyed it. So that's why I put this on this list. It's hard because like, <laughs> again, if this was, if I was given it and told you have to read it, I'd be excited to read it. But do I think I'm ever realistically gonna get to it? No. So I'm gonna put Unread and Uninterested, which is the first one that we have of them. But yeah, I just don't think I'm ever gonna read it. I didn't hear much about it. And I think if I was to read Nikita Gill, I'd maybe read some of her older stuff that had a bit more buzz around it. Like some more of the, I feel like she has another Greek uh, poetry inspired book. It's hard to say, oh, I'm uninterested because I never really say that. I'm not the kind of person who really ever says, I'll never read that. Do you know what I mean? I'll pretty much read anything. <laughs> but if I'm being realistic, it's not realistic. It's just not realistic. So yeah, uninterested. Oh my God, I feel harsh. I feel like I'm like really savage right now. Next is The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. This comes out on the 18th of February. Genuinely, I am iconic because I have read The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. <laughs> I liked it. I would say, I think I gave it four stars. Maybe looking back, it's mm, like a 3.5 because the ending to this was annoying as well. It was a bit preachy. It was a bit like ha ham fisted. Is that a term? Oh my God. It was a bit like on the nose about what it was trying to communicate in the ending. I didn't think it was done very well, but I loved the isolation. I loved the setting. I loved some of the twists, particularly like at the midpoint to like two thirds point were really, really good, like really high tension. And I'm going to continue on with this series as well. I, it's a series, it turns out. Who knew? I mean, listen, trying to sabotage me, making me pick up books when I think they're standalones and then making them a series. The next is Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. This comes out on the 23rd of Feb. Fuck off. I loved Honey Girl. I am doing so well. I'm so proud of myself. I really loved Honey Girl. Oh my God, a great romance. If you're into romance, pick up Honey Girl. It's, it's such a gorgeous romance, but it's not really a romance. So I lied. Did tell a bit of a lie? I tell a bit of a lie there. I did tell a bit of a lie there. But I did tell a bit of a lie there. It's really more of a story about like pressure and pressure when you, when you get to a certain point in your life and it's supposed to have everything figured out and burnout. Why did I read this? Like, I think just after I finished uni, I read this so I could relate to it because a bitch was burnt out. A bitch was tired. A bitch was exhausted. I really loved Honey Girl. I thought it was an amazing book. And again, I will continue to read from Morgan, Morgan, Morgan Rogers. Thank you. And the last of our February releases is Quiet in Her Bones by Nalini Singh. Ooh. This comes out on the 25th of February. Okay, I, I'm gonna say unread and uninterested for this. I saw I never wanna read from Nalini Singh. Actually, funny enough, Nalini Singh is like an author that Mara really, really likes. But I didn't really know anything about this book. I think it was like on the list of like top thrillers coming out this year on Goodreads. And I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. Let me put it on my most anticipated list when I've never read from this author, never heard of this author before this, have no context of what this author has written before. Mm-hmm, that's a good idea. Yeah. would not do that now wouldn't do that now not very interested 
<laughs> is probably better. I feel like if I were to read from Nalini Singh, I wouldn't start with this book, if that makes sense. So first is The Conductors by Nicole Ooh. Glovers. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> That's another unread and uninterested. I'm not interested in reading The Conductors anymore. Partly because it hasn't had very good reviews since it came out. I feel like it had very mixed reviews. And so, you know, when a book hasn't had great reviews and it wasn't a book that I was like wedded to reading in the first place, I'm kind of like, yeah, listen, there's only so much time and so many books in the world. And also this was on this list because I believed I was going to be getting an arc of it. And then the arc never came. <laughs> I'd put it on this list because anything that I thought I was getting to review, obviously I wanted to put on this list because I thought I'd be reading it soon. And then the arc never arrived and then the reviews came out and they weren't great and I thought I'm not interested in getting this for myself, if that makes sense. So yeah. <laughs> next is A History of What Comes Next by Read it! I loved A History of What Comes Next. It was a controversial book. Not everyone loved it, but I really loved it. I've spoken about this a lot. I thought, well, I gave it four stars. I didn't love it. But I, I I look back on it and I'm like, that's a bit of an iconic book. A little bit of an iconic move there, Mr. Sylvain Nouvel. By the way, I think I always say his name wrong. I apologise. But now I've said it at Sylvain Nouvel for so long, um, don't think I'm going to be changing how I say it. <laughs> Who is she? Who is she? Next is The Mirror Season by Anna Marie <gasps> Oh, McCormore. Okay, listen. Anna Marie McCormore is an author that I always want to read and never end up reading. <laughs> so I have not read this, but I am still interested. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> I just like a wild beauty as many of you know has been a five star prediction for so long um and I've just haven't read it I own two anime macmores now and I have not read either of the books from them that I own and it's shameful because like how do I keep doing this and the thing is Lake Claw by anime macmore is on my most anticipated releases for this year so maybe I'm just gonna have to do like read three anime macmores one day who knows next is every vow you break by Peter Swanson oh okay unread and uninterested <laughs> This is good though, I feel like unread and uninterested, like we're culling what I'm no longer interested in. And that's, that's positive, that's positive, yeah. Every Value Break by Peter Swanson, again, didn't get very good reviews. <laughs> but Peter Swanson's next book, Nine Lives, which is coming out this year, is all my most anticipated still of this year because it has been getting better reviews and it's more of my kind of thing, I feel like. Every Value Break was like, I'm husband and wife, like I don't care about husbands and wives, I really could give less of a shit. But Nine Lives is more about like people getting killed off one by one, so that's more or in the vein of what I would enjoy. But yeah, Every Valley Break just did not get very good views, even from people who really love Peter Swanson's stuff. Rule of Rules by Lee Bardugo. Next. Okay, I have not read Rule of Rules, but I am still interested. I own it. I need to read uh, King of Scars and Rule of Rules. Why did I put, but this is the thing, why did I put Rule of Wolves on my TBR when I hadn't even read King of Scars? When I hadn't even read Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom at this point. Really. Yes. I will just say that um, I, I sabotage a lot of things oh. in it, yeah. Okay. I am still interested in reading this. I think I just put it on here because I love the cover. I really love the like pink whiteness. Everyone else hated it, but I, I really love the cover. <laughs> First is Pride and Premeditation by Tirza Price. This Have not read Pre Pride and Premeditation, but I'm still interested. Okay, we're slacking a bit now. I feel like my the earlier in the year that they were, the more time I had to read them. I'm gonna be reading it hopefully this year at some point with a series that I'm starting on my channel. It's just like, it sounds like a fun campy murder mystery as a retelling of Pride and Prejudice. I mean, you can't lose, really. It's gonna be fun, even if it's like not amazing. Next is Malice by Heather Walter. This comes out on the 13th of April. Okay, Malice, unread and uninterested. <laughs> oh no, this has now gone downhill. This was another one where I was under the impression I was gonna be getting an arc and the arc never arrived. <laughs> So that was why it was on this list. And again, I probably would have read it and reviewed it if I got the arc, but then reviews came out and it, this got pretty good reviews actually. This didn't get bad reviews, but I just like lost interest. I lost interest. I was a lot more into like high, high fantasy at last, the start of last year. And I haven't been reading or drawn to like as much of that other than what I've already got established on my TBR. Do you know what I mean? I've tried to be a lot more selective. So that's probably why wasn't as interested in that. Oh, I'm super excited for Witches Steeped in Gold coming out on the 20th of April. Okay, <laughs> this is a funny one. I have not read Witches Steeped in Gold yet. We're slacking now. We are slacking now. I am still interested in it. Now, this got bad reviews. Like, it got quite bad reviews. But I, I own it and I still want to read it. I love the edition of it that they have and I want to give it a go. Even if I end up like DNFing it, it's okay. <laughs> I am trepida trepidatious. That's a big word for Alma. To go into it because it got bad reviews, but like, who knows? Maybe I'll fall in love. First is Project Hail Mary by Andy ah! Weir. This comes out on the 4th of May. I love Project Hail Mary. Oh my God, one of the best sci-fi 
ever read it. No, it was great. It was really, really amazing. I read this on holiday actually, and I had just such a great time reading it. It's got great characters. It's got a great storyline. Andy Weir just knows how to write sci-fi that you will be interested in. He just knows how to write it that like you'll you'll understand it. Do you know what I mean? That like it it makes you feel clever because you're like, oh my god, I understand science. Even though I don't, but like he he makes me feel special. You know what I mean? <laughs> Next is the ones we're meant to find by Joan Heath coming out the fourth. Of okay. May. Another sci-fi that is right behind me here. Here they are. <laughs> that I have read and I did not like. I didn't like the ones we're meant to find. I feel like, again, this didn't get great reviews. It was just confusing and I was bored. I was just like really bored the whole time when reading it, which is like so mean, it's so mean, it's so mean. Then we have She's Too Pretty to Burn by Wendy Hurd. So this, oh my God. Okay, I have not read She's Too Pretty to Burn. I think I'm no longer interested in owning this physically and reading it physically and prioritizing it as something I buy, but I am still interested because I'm gonna read the audiobook of it. I have the audiobook on script, so I'm gonna read the audiobook on there at some point. It's not very long. It's like a picture of Dorian Gray retelling. I didn't hear a lot of people speak about it, but since I have access to the audiobook and it's not very long, I will probably get to this quicker than some of the physical books that, that I'm more interested in. <laughs> oh, okay. What I'm super excited for next is super Sorrowland excited by River Solomon coming out 6th of May. This is, okay, unread and still interested. I don't even own this, which is so painful to me. Why have I not bought this yet? I'm like, I just, I really want it. I really want to try River Solomon. I hey, cool. Flop. Girl, you have done it again. Constant lowering the bar for us all. And I own The Deep as well, which I'm hoping I might read next month. If like all goes to plan. I don't even own it. Like what the hell? Why am I just like, ugh, I'm trying to save money guys. I'm trying to not buy too many books. And I have over 200 unread books now that I own. So I'm trying to be like, not buy all the books when I could, but like, I'm trying to be more constrained. I want to get that down to like 160 this year. That would be nice by the end of the year. Well, before Christmas, let's say that before Christmas to get that number down to like 160. I need to start reading a lot more to do that because I've not been reading enough this year. Another one I'm very excited by is Switch uh, by A.S. King. Unread and still interested. Oh, <laughs> Me and A.S. King have a funny relationship, I often say this, where I either give her books five stars and they are like outstanding, some of the best books I've read that year, or I give them like two stars. There's like no in-between. <laughs> it generally has not been an in-between for me. And this got funny reviews, but I'm hoping I'll still love it because it's weird and like, oh, I'm really excited. Another one that I might, I'm doing like a video next month where I don't know what I'm going to be reading next, but I'm hopefully going to be reading short books. I won't know till I'm like in the process of filming the video what I'm reading. And this is another one that's kind of like, oh my mental possible TBR for that. Another one, one of my most, most anticipated, anticipated, reading it the day it comes reading out. Reading it the day it comes out. Oh. <laughs> Phew! That was fucking scary. My heart's going pitter patter, pitter patter. I feel sick like I could throw up. I have read Heartstopper Volume 4. My babies, Nick and Charlie, a lot of you know, it's like my favourite graphic novel series ever. Some of my favourite characters ever. I did read this. I don't think the day it came out, but like I read it like very soon afterwards. I did a whole blog for it. It's only one graphic novel but like this was when I was finishing uni so like I needed like some quick videos to get out because like a bitch was fucking stressed so I think I did a whole vlog on it and I loved it I mean they're just amazing I feel like I need to like reread the whole series one evening <laughs> then we have Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid coming out on the 27th of May okay I read and loved Malibu Rising it's one of my only five stars I gave out this year it was my book club pick for my patron in January and it was like the only book that we've all really enjoyed like we haven't had very good luck so far far this year or just in general with our book club the pick this month has been controversial already so but we loved we all pretty much loved Malibu Rising I feel like it was a pretty positive month for us and yeah I absolutely loved it I know a lot of people haven't rated it as high as like Evelyn Hugo or Daisy Jones but I loved it just as much I just thought something about her Jenkins Reid's writing where I'm like you are you've got the money now I mean you've got the money you could like take forever to write books but I need them like Stat. The next is The Baby's Ooh. Mind by Oyen Can Braithwaite. Or okay, yeah, I read The Baby's Mind and I did not like it. I didn't like it. It was a really short novella, like a thrillery novella. And like, whilst I admire it <laughs> for what it was trying to do, it just didn't land for me. Like, we didn't have enough time to like fully get into it. It just, yeah, um, no, no, no. It was a strange reading experience. I remember I read it in like an hour and I was like, what the fuck did I just read? 
looked very strange. <laughs> uh, and like, I admire it because it was written for this like organization called the Reading Agency, which is meant to help people get into reading who have not been reading. And so I admire the whole ethos behind this book and the idea behind this kind of collection of books that came out in this quick reads series from the Reading Agency. But for me, in just my personal enjoyment, it, I didn't. I didn't enjoy it. What is The Dinner Guest by B.P. Walter? I haven't read it, but I'm still interested. <laughs> yeah, this one is like one of my top thrillers to read. I have a video idea which it can fit into. So like, I should just read it for that. I should just do the video, but like, we know I haven't been reading. Get your fucking ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. I need to, be, I need to become a bitch who reads a book every day. To like do all of my best video ideas of vlogs. All of them are vlogs and I'm not reading. Like, mm, <laughs> this week my reading is gonna have a resurgence and we're gonna like be our best selves all of a sudden it's all it's gonna happen so anyway yeah i'm still interested in reading that i own it and i'm very excited to get to it oh the my first god is the tea dragon tapestry by katie o'neill oh, haven't read the tea dragon tapestry but i'm still interested in um, i need to read the second one which one of uh, my patrons lisa like oh my god it's like the best thing i've ever received sent me the second one the prequel back um but yeah i haven't read either of these yet but hopefully i will read them soon because Tea Dragon Society is one of the best graphic novels. It's like up there with Heartstopper for me and how much I love it and how beautiful I think it is. Then we have The Chosen the Beautiful by Nevo coming out the 1st of June. Okay, I'm just saying about uh, June. Obviously, I didn't read these books. Um, Chosen the Beautiful, have not read, still interested. It's another book. Mm, I don't know if I'll read it for that vlog I'm talking about, but cause it's a little bit too long, but I am excited. It's had again mixed reviews, but Nevo, oh, I love Nevo's writing. Like beautiful, lyrical, amazing, like gorgeous. Like, oh, I love Nevo's writing. So I'm hoping that I will love it. I'm hoping, I, I mean, mm, and it's a great Gatsby retelling and I just feel like I'll like the weirdness that other people didn't enjoy as much. Then we have One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. I know Red, White and Royal Blue was one of my worst books last year. Okay, One Last Stop, unread and uninterested. <laughs> say, why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? Yeah, I just decided Casey McQuiston, probably not for me. After how much I really didn't like Red, White and More Blue, I thought to myself, do I really want to read this or do I just think I want to read it because everyone else wants to read it? And it was the latter. I didn't actually want to read it, so came off my TBR. I just wasn't interested. And that's okay. I don't have to be interested in every book that everyone else is interested in, which is what I thought I did have to be for a while. And I don't. We live and we learn. We age and we grow. We grow and we age okay whatever then we have another one of my most anticipated releases is darling by kay ankram this one yeah i think i'm gonna say unread and uninterested here's the thing kay ankram i've read two books from kay ankram and they were both like five stars basically like four high fours to five stars but darling again just didn't get great reviews and i heard it was very different from kay ankram's other stuff that i just don't know if i'm interested now kay ankram did talk on twitter about how important this book was in like being able to actually do more of the weird shit like publishing this book is what's enabling doing more of the weird shit but um i just yeah i don't think i'm interested this was like one of my most anticipated releases like up 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 there but then hearing people talk about it who love k Ankram, like i'm thinking of mina and kayla um they didn't really like it so i just don't think i'm gonna prioritize getting to it then we have blackout which is actually an anthology yep i read and really loved blackout i thought it was a great read it's a great quick read it reads as like a whole story i thought they did great a, a great job as a collaboration um and yeah I really, really enjoyed it and I want to read more from like the other authors in that anthology that I haven't read from before. And then my last anticipated release, <laughs> oh my god we're there, of 2021 of the first last half one. is Survive the Night by Riley Sagar coming out the oh. 29th of June. Yep. I've read it and I didn't like it. <laughs> I feel like no one likes Survive the Night. But here's the thing. I look back on it fondly because I went into it. By the time I was reading it, uh, if you've watched the vlog, it was in, you'll know. I went into it with such low expectations. Like, I was like, you're not, you know, I'm not going to enjoy this. That when I actually read it, I was pleasantly surprised by not how much I enjoyed it because I didn't enjoy it. But it was just like, I let go of any any hope. So it was just kind of like a funny reading experience. So I actually look back on it quite fondly, even though objectively I didn't like it. <laughs> okay, let me take, oh my God, I'm taking my AirPods out. I, my ears, I'm alive again. <laughs> oh my God, does anyone else feel like they're just like suffocating? Anyway, so let's total up. Read and liked, we had 11. Read and didn't like, we had five. Unread and still interested. 
interested, we had 12, and unread and uninterested, we had 7. I read 45% of what was in this video. I read 45%, which, you know what? It could have been worse. It could have been worse. I love that. Of what I have read, I liked 68%, which I feel like, again, that's pretty good. Like, it could have been worse. To, to be fair, I feel like, considering I was so new to this, I was so new to picking new releases, uh, I was so new to, like, making sure I read them, which isn't really happening, but whatever, that I'm okay with it. And especially because, I mean, these past three months could have been time for me to read a few more of these that were on the unread and still interested. I mean, I'm I've touched it a little bit. A lot of shit's been happening in my life. And I've really struggled to, like, get on my feet like I would like to in this start of this year. I feel like now that it's spring, I feel like also a lot of that was due to my seasonal affective disorder. And this year, I feel like it just manifested in me, like, finding it really hard to do shit, <laughs> basically, in January and February. But now that it's sunny, I feel like I'm really getting back to it. My reading could have been better if that happened have been happening and I could have finished a few more of these off. So having read 45%, not ideal, not ideal, but it's not horrific. And actually if you take out like the seven that I'm just not going to read, I've read 57% of what is on this list. So that's a bit better. Like I've read over half of what was on this list that I still out of what I actually want to read now. Do you know what I mean? So I'm pretty happy with that. 16 read, 11 liked, 5 I didn't like, and seven books that I culled and I wasn't interested. So 20%, 20% of what was on this list actually, I am no longer interested in reading, which is interesting as well. But I think that's good. You know, I, we're growing, we're learning, we're listening to reviews, and you don't have to be wedded to what you put on this list once you hear reviews and you're no longer interested. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I feel like it was 10 years long. Let me know which of these books you have read and enjoyed, or read and not enjoyed, or unread and still interested, or unread and not interested. Let me know all of that down below. I would love to know. If you've gotten to the end of this video, put the headphones emoji because my earphones really hurt me and I wish I wore my headphones. <laughs> um, put that if you got to the end. Listen, I love you guys so much. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe. I upload videos Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sundays and I'm literally, I'm, I'm back on my bullshit. Like I'm back. Like the videos that I've got coming are so exciting um, and I hope you're excited for them. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you very soon in another video. Bye!